O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. In your resurrection, O oh Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and praise for ever. For you have guided the saints to bring your word to your people, to show the people your love, your forgiveness and your care. We thank you, Lord, in this place for Saints Dominica and Indracht, whom you brought from Ireland over 13 centuries ago to the banks of the Tamar and the Cornish peoples living here. Here we stand in their place, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may shine your light. Guide our steps as you guided Saints Dominica and Indracht. Help us to be a light to the world as they were here long ago. For yours, Lord, is the glory. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God forever.
say together a confession. Your love for us, Lord God, is enduring, never-ending, forever, eternal. Our love for you so often falters and stumbles along. We confess that we do not take our responsibility for caring for your creation seriously enough. We confess that we don't always take our responsibility for each other seriously. We don't always show the friendship we ought. We don't always think about what it is that you would have us do. Help us to follow you as the saints who left their home to spread your word in this alien place did. Forgive us our weaknesses and strengthen our resolve to be your people and to do your work. In the glory of God. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind and as our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down on us to cleanse our hearts and to set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. The psalm for today is number 119, verses 17 to 32. Deal bountifully with your servant, so that I may live and observe your word. Open my eyes, so that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. I live as an alien in the land. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul is consumed with longing for your ordinances at all times. You rebuke the insolent, accursed ones who wander from your commandments. Take away from me their scorn and contempt, for I have kept your decrees. Even though princes sit plotting against me, your servant will meditate on your statutes. Your decrees are my delight, they are my counsellors. My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. When I told of my ways, you answered me. 
teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous work. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Put false ways far from me, and graciously teach me your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I set your ordinances before me. I cling to your decrees, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. I run the way of your commandments, for you enlarge my understanding. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first reading is taken from the Epistle of Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. This is the message translation. So, here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for Him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, you always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. I'm speaking to you out of deep gratitude for all that God has given me, and especially as I have responsibilities in relation to you. Living then, as every one of you does, in pure grace, it's important that you do not misinterpret yourselves as people who are bringing goodness to God. No, God brings it all to you. The only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and by what he does for us, not by what we are and what we do for him. In this way, we are like the various parts of the human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Each of us finds our meaning and function as a part of his body. But as a chopped off finger or a cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much, would we? So since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvellously functioning parts in Christ's body, let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be, without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something we aren't. If you preach, just preach God's message, nothing else. If you help, just help. Don't take over. If you teach, stick to your teaching. If you give encouraging guidance, be careful you don't get bossy. If you're put in charge, don't manipulate. And if you're called to give aid to people in distress, keep your eyes open and be quick to respond. If you work with the disadvantaged, don't let yourself get irritated with them or depressed by them. Keep a smile on your face. This is the word of the Lord. The 
The second reading is taken from Matthew 16, verses 13 to 20, and this is also in the Message Translation. When Jesus arrived in the villages of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, What are people saying about who the Son of Man is? And they replied, Some think he's John the Baptizer, some say Elijah, some Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. But he pressed them, How about you? Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter said, You are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus came back. God bless you, Simon, son of Jonah. You didn't get that answer out of books or from teachers. My Father in heaven, God himself, let you in on this secret of who I really am. And now I'm going to tell you who you are, really are. You are Peter, a rock. This is the rock on which I'll put together my church, a church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. And that's not all you will have complete and free access to God's kingdom, keys to open any and every door, no more barriers between earth and heaven, heaven and earth. A yes on earth is a yes in heaven, a no on earth is a no in heaven. He swore his disciples to secrecy. He made them promise that they would tell no one that he was the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. I, I've just been doing, over the past few months, I've been involved with a Green Christian course. And if you haven't come across the Green Christians, uh, it's an organisation, well, it's green and it's Christian, it says it all, really. But if you Google Green Christian, you'll, you'll find the website. And they have been doing um, a, a part of their ministry, has been what they call the Radical Presence course. If you Google Radical Presence, you'll come up with a pop group, which may or may not be what you're wanting. Uh, but if you go on to the Green Christian website and then look for Radical Presence, um, that's the course which I've been involved with now for, I don't know, four or five months, I dare say. And it's been looking at what would be a proper Christian response to the extraordinary times, the extraordinary period that we've been that we've been living through. And one of the things that keeps coming up, which people keep saying in the discussion groups is, well, it's all too big for me. I, I can't cope with it. I can't do it. Um, it's, I'm too ordinary. It needs somebody who is very special to be able to, to do with this, to, to cope with it. Well, the reading that we had is about the apostles and they are the most ordinary people in the world. They are mostly fishermen. We don't know the occupations of some of them, aren't given, but basically they're fishermen. Uh, and there's a hated tax collector in there for good measure, despised by the Romans, hated by the Jews and generally fiddled people as far hard as they could go. Uh, they were just so ordinary. And their leader, Jesus of Nazareth, what was he? He was a carpenter. And of course there were the religious experts, the, the, there were the Sadducees and the Pharisees and 
and all the other educated elite, and Jesus had a pretty poor view of them. He had several run-ins with them, and he had a pretty poor view of them. Uh, an evil and adulterous generation, he called them. Uh, and that was when he was being polite. Uh, political invective is nothing new. So, in the passage that we've read, Jesus asked the apostles, who do people say that I am? And the apostles, they prevaricate a bit, I think. I would love to have been a fly on the wall. But that's a question they can, they can answer. Who do other people say that I am? They knew who he had to be. They'd seen his miracles, they'd seen his teaching, they'd heard him dealing with the religious experts, with the religious lawyers, um, and running rings around them. He, he just had to be the Messiah, but the Messiah would never ever come to a group like them. They were just ordinary people who just lived ordinary sort of lives as fishermen nothing special about them at all. And so Jesus says to them, who am I? And, and they can answer that question. They say, well, some people say you're John the Baptist. Um, some people say you're Elijah. That's going for the big time, that is. Some people say uh, that you're Jeremiah. Some people just say that uh, you're a prophet. And then Jesus says to them, as he says to us, yes, but who do you say? Who do you say that I am? And I think they all hop from one leg to the other because they all knew who he was, but it just wasn't believable that the Messiah would trouble about people like, like them. And so good old Simon Peter, you can always rely on Simon Peter to, um, to, to open his mouth before he engages his brain. He always does. And he blurts it out. You're the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. Ah, Simon Peter has said it. You're the Messiah. You're the son of the living God. It was just too big, too, too massive to be able to put into words. But Simon Peter, but Simon Peter does it for them. And this ragtag and bobtail group of fishermen, led by a carpenter, turned the world upside down in 33 whatever it was AD the Romans crucified as they did fairly frequently um, some malcontent didn't really know what the story was but anyway he was a troublemaker and it's a good idea just to get rid of the troublemakers so so they crucified the leader of this of this group of unimportant people who didn't count and quite obviously, if you execute their leader, then the movement won't come to anything and life will continue as normal. Let's go back to normal, said the Romans. Except that it didn't. And 300 years later, in 313, the Emperor Constantine actually acknowledged the existence of Christianity within the Roman Empire. They'd tried very hard to get rid of it and they'd failed completely. And 10 years later in 323 AD, um, in the Edict of Milan, he actually made Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire. It didn't do a lot of good Christianity, but it was the most extraordinary turnabout from executing the leader that nobody had ever heard of except for just the local people, to accepting that the religion that he bought was the official religion of the Roman 
empire, they turned the world completely upside down. Nobody would have believed that that was possible. And you and I, as the people who are presently the people who belong to the church, we also have to turn the world completely upside down. We are living through one of the great upheavals of history. We are meeting and worshipping under really strange conditions, either virtually all together by computer, or if we meet in churches, we have to have face masks and we aren't allowed to sing and we have to be socially distanced two meters away from each other. It is totally extraordinary. Nobody would have believed it possible. And we don't know whether COVID-19 is on its way out or whether it's just gathering its breath to come roaring back. And even when COVID-19 has been has been defeated, as, as it would be put, is the COVID-20, COVID-21, COVID-22 just waiting in the wings? We simply don't know. But what we do know is that to carry on as we are is not an available option. And this is one of the great sadnesses of the times that we live in, that all of our members of parliament, and it doesn't matter which party they belong to, they know perfectly well that if they don't promise people what people want, then they aren't going to get elected. So, if they think that what people want is for the situation to go back to normal as soon as possible, that is exactly what they will try to provide. But we know, and actually everybody knows in their bones, that the existing system won't work. We are destroying that part of creation which looks after us. It's an absolutely crazy and a stupid thing to do, and yet we carry on doing it. Let's get back to normal. No. And it isn't just a matter of tinkering at the edges either. It's a matter of an absolutely fundamental system change. It has to change completely. And we are the ones who have to change it. Einstein is credited as saying, he almost certainly didn't, Einstein is credited as saying, if you keep repeating insanity, is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. If we keep doing the same thing, we will keep getting the same results. And I think what it all comes to is that we have to acknowledge the importance of giving God <coughs> control. We're terribly bad at that. We like to have control of everything. We like to, to control our going out and our coming in and our work and, 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 and. We like to be able to control everything. But the fact is that what the apostles recognized was that they had, was that Jesus was the son of the living God and he was the one in control. And that was what enabled them to turn the whole world completely upside down. And if we get a hold of that, it is what will help us to turn the whole world completely upside down. And the passage from Romans, the passage from Romans tells us, tells us some lovely things. He says, um, Uh, don't don't get so well adjusted. Yes, don't become so well adjusted to your culture 
that you fit into it without even thinking. And that is exactly what our culture tries to do with us. And then there's this business about each part of the body being separate. And if you're a toe, don't pretend you're a finger. And if you're a finger, don't pretend you're a toe. And then he goes on, if you preach, just preach God's message, nothing else. If you help, just help. If you teach, stick to your teaching. If you give encouraging guidance, be careful you don't get bossy. If you're put in charge, don't manipulate. If you're called to give aid to people in distress, keep your eyes open, be quick to respond. And the one I like most of all, if you work with the disadvantaged, don't let yourself get irritated with them or depressed by them. Keep a smile on your face. And we can do that if we recognize that God is in charge and God will do what God wants to do and if we try and go against that, we will never achieve anything at all. But if we go allowing God to have control, then perfectly ordinary people like you and like me, we don't need to be experts. Perfectly ordinary people are perfectly capable of turning the world upside down. And that is what we shall do. The Responsory. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. He has become my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. And we say together the Gospel Canticle, which is taken from the Canticle, A Brother Son, by St Francis of Assisi. Most high, all-powerful, good Lord, yours are the praises, the glory, the honour and all blessing. To you alone, most high, do they belong, and no man is worthy to mention your name. Be praised, my Lord, through all your creatures, especially through my Lord, brother, son, who brings the day and you give light through him. And he is beautiful and radiant in all his splendour. Of you, Most High, he bears the likeness. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Moon. And the stars, in heaven you form them, clear and precious and beautiful. Praise be you, my Lord, through Brother Wind and through the air, cloudy and serene, and every kind of weather through which you give sustenance to your creatures. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Water, which is very useful and humble and precious and chaste. Praise be you, my Lord, through Brother Fire, through whom you light the night, and he is beautiful and playful and robust and strong. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Mother Earth, who sustains us and governs us, and who produces varied fruits with coloured flowers and herbs. We offer our intercessions for the whole of God's creation and our part in it, and we say together. We pray for the lost sheep of this world, 
for politicians striving to hang on to power and influence. For leaders of the nations who have forgotten to serve the common good. We pray for the lost sheep of this world, for all who follow the fashions and frivolities of today at the expense of tomorrow, for all who get swept along by the crowd on tides of prejudice and easy judgments. We pray for the lost sheep of this world, for all who wander off on their own to escape from reality for all who are led astray, away from safety and well-being. We pray for the lost sheep of this world, for all who take what they have for granted, for all who are unable to give thanks for the things they have. Loving Shepherd, we pray for your healing in all who are sick at this time. We pray for all who mourn. Lift them in your loving arms and carry them through their time of grief. To the glory of your name. Amen. Christ as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me. Christ beside me on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me, on my left and my right. And now we come to the collect for today. Dear God, you search us and know us. May we rely on you in strength and rest on you in weakness, now and in all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Hallelujah.
As we come to the end of our service, we say together this Christian Celtic blessing. We all say this. May the road rise up to meet us. May the wind be always at our back. May the sun shine upon our face. The rains fall soft upon our fields. And until we meet again, may God hold us in the palm of his hand. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. So let us offer one another a sign of peace, and then let us take that peace into a suffering world, and into a suffering creation, as a pledge of our faith, and as, a, and as God's seal on our prayers.